the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Based on the reporting from TSN and Rick Westhead, we now know that for years, Team Canada, Soccer Canada, both the women's and men's sides have been recording their opponents' practices in order to gain a competitive advantage and have essentially, let's just say the word, been cheating. And this is the biggest scandal going in the sporting world right now as the Olympics get underway. The first part of the Olympics actually happens before the opening ceremony because there's uh, soccer matches that take place on Wednesday and Thursday, as well as some of the rugby has also taken place. So we are underway with the Olympics. And as we await the Blue Jays to make some more moves with their pending free agents and NHL news to break, we will be talking a lot about the Olympics in the next few weeks on this channel. And today, right now, we're talking about this giant scandal that has made me a little embarrassed to be a Canadian today. So on Monday, we're going to talk about what unfolded this week, and then we're going to get into the reporting from Rick Weston. On Monday, two Team Canada staffers are caught with a drone filming New Zealand's practice. And so Team Canada, the women's side, is playing New Zealand on Thursday. And on Monday, two staffers are caught with a drone filming their practice. And French police then catch them with the drone. They interrogate them. They find out that not only do they have footage of that practice, but a previous practice as well as well as text messages with Team Canada staffers confirming like, hey, let's go film this practice. These aren't just rogue people doing this. No, this is an organized, orchestrated event of them taking this drone and filming New Zealand's practice in order to gain a competitive uh, advantage. So that all breaks. That scandal happens. Team Canada responds by suspending these two staffers that they're, they're sent home. They're no longer with Team Canada on the women's side. And Bev Priestman, the head coach, is eventually suspended for, or not, it's not suspended, but relieved of her duties for game number one against New Zealand. She, she says, I'm going to, as it's appropriate, I'm not going to coach game number one against New Zealand while an independent investigation by Soccer Canada takes place into this drone footage shooting. So that's all announced. They are going to do an investigation internally and find out what happens. Thursday comes along. Bev doesn't coach the game. Team Canada wins. They beat New Zealand 2-1. to one. And then afterwards, we get more information. Eventually, Bev Priestman is officially relieved of her duties for the entirety of the Olympics because this Rick Westhead TSN report is released. And in there, we find out so many more juicy details. And what I want to do first is recount All of the instances of cheating that Team Canada has done over the last few years. Because in the article, Rick identifies many different times that Team Canada has done this. And it shows that it is not a one-off incident with New Zealand. Or it's not even a couple times over the last, in like big matches or big events or big tournaments. This is an institutional plan by Soccer Canada and their coaches to cheat and film practices. It is a part of the organization's ethos to film practices. So let's go over the amount of times that we know of that Soccer Canada did this. We'll start with the men's side in 2019. Rick writes, staff and contractors connected to the men's national team have also filmed the closed training sessions of competitors, one of the sources told TSN, adding that Canada used a drone to record a U.S. training session before a November 2019 game in Florida. The U.S. won that game 4-1. to one. Two years later, Honduras stopped a training session in Toronto during World Cup qualifiers after someone spotted a drone overhead. So all the way back to November 2019, there is evidence that the men's side has been filming practices. Last time I checked my calendar, it's 2024, and that's five years ago Team Canada was doing that. How many times have they done that since? And at the time, John Herdman, who is the head coach of Team Canada, who's now the head coach of TFC, said that, you know, there's a lot of drones in the sky all the time. And, you know, you got to be careful. Who knows what this drone is for? You know, it could have been anybody using that drone. He got away with it. And Team Canada got away with it. And to continue the amount of times that Team Canada has done this, on the women's side, 
Rick illustrates a number of different instances. Let's go over some of them. One of the sources said the spying included a Team Canada coach filming two of Japan's closed-door training sessions during the 2021 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. TSN has reviewed text message correspondence of a women's national team coach discussing secret filming of their opponent's training sessions ahead of games in 2022 against Costa Rica, South Korea, and Trinidad. So we've already, that's four, that's four instances they can prove. And then we get some more. The filming also included at least one training session before a women's national team game against Panama in July 2022 when Canada was attempting to qualify for the Women's World Cup in Australia. One of the sources said... Two years after the Tokyo Olympics, a Canada soccer contractor who was scheduled to travel to Australia for the 2023 World Cup was told their responsibilities would include trying to record training sessions of opposing teams. Right there, we've detailed that the women's side of Team Canada filmed at the last Olympics during World Cup qualifying during the World Cup. We have a systemic issue with Soccer Canada on both sides with the coaches that they employ who believe that filming opponents' practices is simply just gaining a competitive advantage, like having better players or practicing more or whatever. They think that filming is just a part of of the game, and it's illustrated by some of the sources in Rick Weston's article. One of them said this, most people see this as cheating, which it is, one of the sources said. Some of our coaches just see it as a competitive advantage and justify it by saying everyone does it, which is also not true. Not everyone cheats and neither should we. He goes on to talk about how staffers were intimidated into doing this, saying that it's important to give 110% when you're in this role because it's such a competitive landscape and this is a part of your job. So if you're not will willing to do this, you're not right for this role. And people were afraid to not do this because they were threatened with their jobs if they weren't willing to cheat for Soccer Canada. We have a serious problem right now. I, it's pretty shocking right now that Team Canada is in the Olympics currently at all. And I assume because it's going to take some time for the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, to do their review of what is being what is out there right now and for Soccer Canada's independent review, which is taking place right now, to complete. But I'm shocked that Team Canada is still in the Olympics. Soccer, just the soccer portion of it, not the entirety of Team Canada. I'm shocked that they're allowed to compete. Some of it is, I assume, because... There's no evidence right now that any of the players knew that this was happening. And this seems to be a plan by the coaching staff on both sides. But you have to have some sort of punishment for the body as a whole, even if the players didn't know. And I would be absolutely shocked if Soccer Canada is allowed to compete in the Paris Olympics. Now that all of this is out there, it opens a giant can of worms for this team. And we are into a whole new territory because if you remember, the women's side won gold at the last Olympics. And now there's evidence that they filmed practices back to those last Olympics. Is there any way that that gold medal is now stripped from Canada and, and from this women's team, even though the players didn't know. There needs to be some sort of punishment for them for doing that retroactively. If I'm the IOC, I think you need to punish people for cheating. And this is cheating is against the rules. So is that gold medal taken away? Are they no longer permitted to compete in the Paris Olympics? Everything is on the table right now because of how giant this cheating scandal is. And oh, baby, this is going to be one to watch unfold, and we are going to be keep tra keeping track of it here as we cover the Olympics over the next few weeks. I am a little less proud today to be Canadian. I'm not going to let a giant bag of bad apples spoil the Olympics and rooting for Canada. Obviously, I'm going to be rooting for Canada these entire Olympics, but... Clearly, Soccer Canada should not be something that we are putting support behind right now because they have systemic cheating issues. And it is clearly a top-down problem with the callousness to cheat like this consistently over at least five years over the course of very important soccer events. And 
the repercussions are going to be one to watch. We're going to be following this closely over the next couple of weeks as we cover the Olympics on this feed. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed to the Jesse Blake Sports Report YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. I will see you again here very shortly. Good night from Toronto. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.